Gentlemen, welcome back to the show. You can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bullshit. Inured, I thought I was, to the vagaries of marketing wanketeering. Turn around and whammo, right in the nuts. I can't believe the utter gall of tool companies what make air compressors in their rating systems. The mind boggles at how deceptive it is. If you're anything like me, it oddly strikes you that any compressor can never keep up. Even the, the highest rated compressor can virtually never keep up with the lowest rated tool. And okay, so there's going to be some hyperbole in the ratings. There's going to be some tweakage and so forth. However, there was a class action lawsuit in the early 2000s what uh, brought to term uh, Campbell Hosfield and DeVille Bliss and I think... Uh, uh, Coleman or Cam some other brand that were overrating their compressors and they got their, their pecker punched and they had to uh, settle out of court. So we figured that the ratings on compressors would at least have a modicum of accuracy. My on a year now, we cannibalized the Campbell Hosfield compressor and I replaced it with a roll air, the, oh, that's bull. This is just, uh, you know, we don't, I don't use that much air here. So this is fine for me. It's just a plug-in unit, 115 volts, rated at 4 CFM at 90 PSI. Plenty of air to run little things, even uh, just to bust nuts with the Ugga Dugga gun. The reason I bought this, one, it's a good, it's a good name brand. Two, kind of made in the US and A, so in North America. And also, I like to cultivate, uh, really, well, not relationships, but I put a premium on people not lying to me. So I buy tools that are, that have some ethics, essentially, that aren't all about the marketing wanketeering, that is, you know, stepping over their grandmother to sell a tool. So I like to hilt these. I pay extra because they don't fucking lie to me. So the role there. Paid a little extra because I fingered, I ain't going to lie to me. Boy, howdy, was I wrong. All right, here's the test. We got the FAP off 3.2 CFM at 90 PSI average air consumption. Now this, of course, bought this when I was young, dumb, and full of cum. Of course, the Jacob's truck got to be better than the call it, right? Right? Yeah. Wrong. Never get a Jacob's truck die grinder. Same reason you never get a Jacob's Chuck milling machine. Okay, so essentially what we're going to do. So this is 3.2. The compressor is rated for 4 CFM at 90 PSI. It says so right in the... Look, have a, have a look here. Huh? Huh? See? See? I'm plugging in the compressor. Now if you have a look at the gauge in the tank is 110 PSI. Maybe a blonde one over. Now we're going to run this and we're going to see how much CFM it takes and if the compressor can keep up. Here deck. A parallax error aside, that compressor cannot even come close to keeping up to the die grinder. Let, let's see again now. We've, uh, we're at 120 PSI. We're going to try it again. Okay, we topped out at 3.4 CFM, negating the... Uh, I'm, I'm right in line, so I'm negating the parallax. The camera's a little off kill. In test the second, as with the first, we saw 3.4 CFM cubic feet, uh, S, uh, standard cubic feet per minute of air through this flow meter, and the compressor couldn't keep the pressure up to 90 PSI. It just couldn't keep up. It was dropping and dropping and dropping, and we saw as the, the 
pressure in the tank reduced, so too did the flow. Makes a sense because there's a pressure differential there. The higher the pressure differential, the faster the flow. Okay, so let's see how much air that this compressor actually can output at 90 PSI. What we're gonna do is give her the old French tickler, just a Lee Trevino feather touch and throttle how much hair is going through here. Measure it till we get steady state at 90 PSI on the gauge. And then we can back read how many CFM is actually flowing through that tool. That'll give us the actual CFM that this guy is outputting, that the compressor is outputting at 90 PSI. Catfish, clear as mud I hope. Despite its bold phase hyperbole of 4 CFM at 90 PSI, we saw at 90 PSI it was only outputting but between 0.8 and uh, 1 CFM. So we'll say 0.9 CFM. That is a long way from 4 CFM. What the fuck over? So if the ratings are so out of whack, how are you supposed to buy a compressor what will run a given air tool? Now the rating systems, what they're doing, and this is, in my opinion, vile, obfuscating, I mean, baffling people with bullshit is essentially what this, I, I ain't no dummy. And this, they pulled the wool over my eyes for years. I had no idea this is, I, I just learned of this. And uh, interesting also comment in uh, the patron is that, uh, you know, we get people from all over the world putting into the beer fund, Germans even. And they, in Germany, they have to uh, say what the rating is. And there's a word there, I forget what it is, but it means essentially sucking power. What they are doing when they're rating the CFM is they are rating how much flow they're getting at the inlet at zero PSI gauge, which is 14.7 atmospheric. So they're measuring how much flow not is coming out and going into your tool, but how much flow is going into the compressor. Uh, this is going to angry up the blood. So if and you've been to beer festivals and eaten nothing but poutine, you're going to want to look away. I, uh, it's too late for me. What they're going to be because <laughs> they ain't lying to you. They're just giving you alternative facts. So what they're not telling you is the CFM that you see, they're actually using S CFM, which is standard CFM, meaning that's taken at 14.7 uh, PSI, which is atmospheric pressure at sea level, at a given temperature, say 25 uh, centigrade, whatever, 78 Frankenstein cubic feet per minute. That means they're enacting Boyle's law to baffle you with bullshit. Boyle's Law, of course, um, the Unified Gas Law. No, Boyle's Law is P sub 1, V sub 1 is equal to P sub 2, V sub 2, where P is pressure and V is volume. So we look at this now. On the first side, we get 14.7 PSI times the volume, which is 4.0 CFM. We uh, take it as understood that we're doing this over a minute, so that's going to be 4 cubic feet not per minute, we can omit that. So that gives us 15 times four, which is 60. I'm going dimensionless here, I'm not doing dimensional analysis, so you go ahead and uh, take a couple marks off there, no worries, uh, I can handle it. And the pressure two, of course, is going to be 90 PSI, what the tool uses, plus that 14, so that's gonna give us right around 100 PSI. V sub two is what we wanna find out, which is the actual flow to the tool. Now, because we have this very powerful tool here, the equal sign, that means on both sides of the equation, everything has to be the same. If we wanna get rid of that, we have to divide on both sides. So that V sub two is equal to 0 0.6 CFM. 0 0.6, what the fuck kind of tool are you gonna run with that fart in a windstorm? I hear you. You don't believe me. I, I could scarcely believe it myself that a company, let alone an entire industry, so brazenly pulling the wool over 
uh, consumer's eyes, over our eyes. It, it, it's incredible. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove it to you that that is how they are rating their compressors. Because what we're going to do is we're going to watch the gauge down here. We're going to have it set at 90. And we're going to open this valve here and read off how many CFM we're getting. Now, what happens is at 90 PSI, of course, the air is compressed quite a bit. When it goes through this valve up here, it's open atmosphere, that's zero PSI, 14.7, but it's zero on the gauge. So when we open this up, we're at zero pressure, the gas is going to expand. That's going to give us our rated flow, even though it's at zero PSI and you can't do any work with it. But that is exactly how they are getting the rating. Understandably, this is confusing. I, I didn't figure it out myself until I saw it with my own two eyes and tested what was going on. So effectively, at zero PSI, there's no work being done here. It The compressor is able to, with 90 PSI in the tank, is able to deliver 3.24.5, 3.5 CFM at zero PSI. So if you want to use a tool what's rated at 3.2 at 90 PSI, you must, if you want to size a, a compressor to buy, you must use Boyle's Law. <laughs> There's no, you're never going to be able to keep up to a tool like this uh, on a compressor rated for the same amount because the rating is complete and utter bullshit. In furtherance to the fuckery, if you wanted to run this tool, Boyle's Law, right, uh, 100 PSI or a little more than 100 PSI times uh, 3.2 CFM divided by 14.7, that would give us right around 20 CFM of that standard cubic feet per minute rating on consumer compressors. However, real compressors that are used in industry they rate theirs in the delivered CFM. So if you were to buy a $5,000 Alice Crapco compressor, what put out 20 CFM, those are real CFM delivered at 90 PSI to the tool. So you could run all kinds of things off that kind of power unit. But on this kind of compressor, consumer grade compressors, I mean, you can't run anything. Essentially, it will no, no consumer grade compressor plugged into the wall will run a continuous duty tool. It's physically impossible. It will not supply the air that you need, despite whatever ratings they want to whack on there. It's complete and other douchebaggery, complete marketeering bullshit. Pisses me off. What are you going to do? Invent a new standard, I guess. Spanks for watching. Hey, don't take any wooden nickels. Fuck me. Keep your dick in a... Uh, yeah. <laughs>